In this coding exercise, we have a little bit of an interesting task. So right here, we have a API connector class and it has a method that sends data and included in that method are some begin and rescue blocks and inside of the process is a call to the API call method. Now we're not connecting to a real outside API. Instead, what I'm wanting to mimic is what happens when an API call fails and how we can handle that error gracefully. So by default right here, I am mocking a call to the API that is going to fail every single time. And right now, nothing is going to happen. We're not going to handle this very well. It is simply going to fail, and that is all that's going to happen. However, in a real life scenario, we want to manage this process a little bit better. A very common thing to happen is for us to make an API call and then to have a temporary failure. Maybe the API was down momentarily, maybe it was overloaded for a second, but that is just something that happens and we need to be prepared for how to manage it. So what our description here and what, our, what we are trying to do, let me re-indent this, is if you read the test, it says that our process attempts to connect with an API three times, and then it stores the errors in an errors array. So essentially what we want to happen is the first time, the second time, and then the third time that we hit our API call error, we want to actually cycle back through. So this is a very common pattern that you'll want to implement in real life APIs. If you get a error, and this is a very common one right here, which is the timeout error, where you're trying to connect with an outside service and you get some type of error like this back, we don't want to just say, okay, I don't care about sending my API information anymore. We actually want to attempt it a few more times. So how can we do that? Well, there are a few ways. One, we could create some kind of loop or something like that, but that would be a little bit of a nasty way to write this because we'd have to implement a loop that stores the begin and rescue blocks inside of it, and we'd have a number of things that could go wrong with that kind of setup, and we'd have to write more code. Instead, what we can do is we can actually implement something that's built into the Ruby begin rescue process called retry. So what we can do is I can say retry if attempts, and this is a variable that we're going to create, is less than three. So what I can do is actually create a new attribute in this class and this is going to be an adder accessor called attempts. And then I can create and set this and set it to zero to start off. So I'm going to say initialize, say attempts, set this equal to zero. And now what's going to happen is every time that this process occurs where we start sending data, we're, or we're going to increment our attempts variable by one. And what this is going to do is it's going to try to make the call. It's going to fail because we have it planned and it is supposed to fail. Then it is going to come down into the rescue block. So instead of simply showing the error message to the user, it's going to go right here. It's going to say attempts. How many times have you, you know, what number are you at? If you are less than three, we are going to retry. So what retry does is it's pretty cool. It comes back up right to the begin and it goes through and it goes through the whole process again. So it's going to try to make the API call. It's going to increment our attempts count by one. So the next time through, it's going to be two. This is going to fail again. We're going to rescue the error, and then it's going to come down. Attempts is going to be equal to two. So it's going to cycle back up one more time. It's going to be knocked up to three. Going to try it again. It's going to fail. Then it's going to come down. But now because attempts is going to be the equal to three, it's simply going to quit. And in a real life scenario, then we would do something like raise a custom exception to let 
the user know that the uh, attempt in connecting to the API didn't work, something like that. So that's the first part of it, but that's not going to do everything we need, but let's test it out and have kind of a base case scenario to test with. So I can say API connector new, and now I can say API dot send data. So this is going to be calling our send data method. And now if I go API and say API attempts, now what we should get here is three. So if I run this, and you can see that that did work. So what essentially happened is that same workflow that I spoke about. So it came right here, tried to send data, it went through the process, it, uh, it took attempts up a few times until it was at three, and then it finished off. So that is perfect. We essentially implemented a looping mechanism without having to build a whole loop structure. We simply were able to use the built-in retry process. So this is good, but this will not get our test passing because in addition to retrying, we also need to store the errors that occurred. This is something that you would want to do if you're building out an application. You'd want to know exactly which errors occurred at what time, that kind of thing. So what we can do is let's come back up to our method definition. We're going to add one more adder accessor called errors. And we're going to call errors, set it equal to an empty array in the beginning. And now coming down into our rescue block, we can sit, call errors and simply pipe in whatever the error is. So this is going to take the exception, in this case it's going to be this timeout exception, and it's going to pipe it right into our errors array. So now if we come down and create a new call to see what errors is equal to, this should now be an array of three errors. And if we switch down, you can see right there that this is indeed printing out error no, e timeout, operation timed out, and it created that, put it in an array, and did that three times. So I believe we have everything we need in order to get this passing. I'm gonna wipe out that data and dropping down into our RSpec test. Let's run it. So this is going to be January 30th, and that worked. One example, zero failure. So this is how you can implement the retry method and work with errors in Ruby and make your error handling system a little bit more intuitive.